don't really use a camera bag per se. I have camera bags, but uh, I think because the majority of our traveling is overlanding and done in the Ford Ranger, um, we don't really need bags. So what I actually use are these Front Runner Wolfpack Pro boxes um, to keep all of my camera equipment in. These boxes are incredibly versatile. They are sealed fully, waterproof, dustproofed. They obviously have the hard shell, which uh, protects all of the equipment from bumps and knocks. The cases come with these um, heavy duty clips, which really help to seal them up. Um, and then the lid comes off and it's got a nice rubber seal all the way around the edges that when fits it to the top of the box like that, makes them uh, completely dust and waterproofed. So what do I keep inside? I've got uh, two of these cases. Um, one is for the camera equipment itself and the other one, this one which we'll go into first, is for all of the various accessories um, that I'd like to take along with me. So inside the ammo boxes I keep these uh, bags and pouches. All of them carry various pieces of equipment that I'll need on a trip for filming or for taking photographs. This box along with the other one will sit in the back of the Ranger um, and I'll take out what I need as I need it. The first case is this uh, GoPro hard case. This one is pretty much what it says on the box. Um, I keep uh, GoPro cameras, GoPro batteries in there. So we have the GoPro Hero 7. This one is a nice versatile camera, um, waterproof, shoots in 4K, um, quite a decent battery life. So this one I will use for a variety of purposes um, on various trips. I have a battery charger that you can plug into the wall. Keeps two batteries um, fully charged up. You can also keep this in the car plugged into the USB port. Um, so there's always a stock of fresh batteries for the GoPro Hero 7. I then have uh, this little guy. It's a GoPro Hero Session. And as you can see, it's basically just a little cube with a button to turn it on and off. Um, this one I will stick on the outside of a vehicle or onto the front of the mountain bike. Um, it's a nice handy little camera just to have and to point and shoot. Other things in the box, I have this uh, SanDisk uh, memory card reader, which allows me to download footage off the camera memory cards onto my MacBook Pro or an external hard drive on the fly. Nice thing, it's a USB-C, so it fits into the MacBook Pro quite nicely without needing additional adapters and dongles. We have the battery charger for the Canon EOS R to charge up those batteries. This is the power cable that goes with that to power it up. I uh, also keep this um, handle for the GoPros. And the nice thing about this is that it floats, so when you are shooting in and around water, you don't need to worry about dropping the camera and having it sink to the bottom. I um, also like to keep a couple of these around. Um, it's a 10,000 milliamp um, battery pack. This is quite nice just for a, keeping your phone charged up, but you can then also charge the GoPro batteries as well as the Canon batteries um, off of this. The last thing in the GoPro box is this little GoPro grab bag, which I use for cables and other little bits and pieces. Memory cards, I keep a small Swiss Army knife. Uh, that's a remote shutter switch for the Canon. Uh, cable to plug in the memory card reader. A few more GoPro accessories and some USB-C cables to plug everything into the Mac. We have uh, two more GoPro pouches. These ones, carry more GoPro accessories, so uh, clips that you can hook the GoPro onto, poles and into the car. I've got a suction cup in there so I can put it onto um, the car windscreen. This one, just another knife, a LED lenser uh, flashlight and uh, two LED head torches which always come in handy 
in the dark and also just for lighting up various subjects um, if the light isn't that great for shooting videos. I have this Thule pouch which again carries charging cables, uh, charging plugs, uh, keep a set of wired um, Beats headphones, a 3G Wi-Fi router and then some more battery power banks um, to keep everything charged up. Then for filming in areas that allow it, we have the DJI Mavic. Uh, this is the Mavic Mini. So we have the, the drone itself. Um, these are actually really amazing little pieces of kit. The cameras in here are really, really good. Um, I think this one shoots in 2K, not 4K. But for most people's purposes, that is more than enough. Um, you then have your battery charger, which actually also doubles as a power bank. So if you do run out of power, you can plug your iPhone or your iPad or anything else that you want to in there. And then obviously we have the remote controller. And that is everything that travels along with me in uh, box one. Moving on to box two, uh, this is the one that I keep the actual camera equipment in itself. The Canon EOS R body, a couple of lenses, um, I keep a couple of small uh, tripods that I use, so both of them are Joby's, and then I use a Boya microphone. This is the Joby Gorillapod uh, 3K tripod. Um, it's specifically designed to carry the weight of a mirrorless camera system. So in my case, the Canon EOS R. Um, it will also take the Sony A7, etc, etc. Um, it comes with a ball head tripod uh, connector uh, with a little um, leveling bubble, if you will. You can use this like a normal tripod, but the legs are fully flexible. They bend in... A multitude of different directions you can wrap this thing around trees you can attach it to your car wing mirror um, it is incredibly versatile and a great little tripod to to have in your kit this is another joby um, tripod that i use it's a little handheld one um, you get an adapter that fits onto the ball head at the top so you can attach your smartphone um, so just a nice another option to to have in the kit depending on what you are shooting. This is my uh, camera body of choice. It is the Canon EOS R. It is a mirrorless system, um, full frame. It's got a 30 megapixel count, so nice and big. Um, being full frame, it means you can also crop in quite nicely as well, um, depending on your needs. It's got a nice big touch screen on the back, um, which obviously you can use as your viewfinder or to review your photographs. It is fully articulated, so it turns full 360, it can face forwards, can face backwards. Um, so it's quite handy depending on your camera shooting angle um, if you can't get your eye up to the viewfinder. This is the lens that I do the majority of my video shooting with. It's the Canon 24 to 105. It's an F4 L series lens. You can see the red ring around, around the lens. This is actually the kit lens that comes with the camera. Um, it is quite versatile shooting from 24 all the way to 105. I think the lens that I probably need to get next would be a 16 to 35 mil, um, which just gives you a little bit more options on the wide angle side of things. This lens uses the new Canon RF mount um, for their mirrorless camera range. It is therefore not unfortunately compatible with any of the other Canon um, EOS uh, DSLR range cameras. It allows you to shoot in autofocus or manual focus mode and it is a fully stabilized lens as well which is quite handy because the EOS R body that I use does not have in-body stabilization. Unfortunately, it was one of the f earliest uh, mirrorless cameras that Canon released. It's only in the newer um, R5, R6 and R3 um, camera bodies that they introduced the in-body stabilization. This is the other lens that I use. 
it is the Sigma uh, 150 to 600 mil lens. It is the contemporary lens in the Sigma range. Again, an autofocus, fully stabilized lens. Obviously not a particularly versatile lens um, because it is very big, very heavy. So this is definitely more for using in the car um, with a bean bag, definitely using it on a tripod if you're out and about. Um, but this is the lens that I would then use um, in places like Kruger Park um, for shooting wildlife and that type of stuff. This lens does use the Canon EF uh, mounting system, which means that natively as it stands, it won't fit onto the Canon EOS R mirrorless camera. That is where the adapter comes in. You simply attach the adapter to the lens and that then turns it into an RF lens, which then allows you to attach it to the EOS R camera mirrorless system. And then the last thing um, in the kit is probably the most important thing for a videographer and that is the microphone. Obviously you need decent sound um, for shooting video. The in-camera or the on-body microphones aren't very good so you do need a good external one. This is the Boya um, BY MM1 Plus. It is a cardioid um, condenser shotgun type microphone. So you need directional. Um, you have to point it in the direction of the sound that you want to capture. Um, it comes with this little furry cover. I think they call it a dead cat, which basically helps to reduce any wind noises or that sort of popping sound that you get when you speak. Um, you obviously attach it onto the camera with this adapter. Um, it's nice and flexible. It moves around so it doesn't capture any noises from the camera body as you are holding or moving it around. It is very cost effective. Um, it's a lot cheaper compared to the Rode. Um, Rode make a very similar um, type microphone, but it does come at about three times the price. And personally, I am not convinced that the sound quality is that much better or noticeably better. So if you can pick up one of these, um, I got this one from Take A Lot. Um, I think it was about three or 400 grand. So that's what's in my camera bag, or should I say camera case. Everything you have seen here today is what I take on every trip. And I pretty much use all of the equipment that I've shown you to make the various videos that you have been hopefully watching and enjoying on this YouTube channel. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like this video. Please feel free to subscribe. And if you feel so led, hit the bell button so that you get notified when I post any new videos. Thanks for watching. See you later.